Hey everybody, welcome to the first show of 2022. You're live on Professor and Friends. Welcome to be here. To 2022, Tony and I wish to wish you a happy new year. Welcome to Professor and Friends 2022. Woo woo. <laughs> <laughs> that was fun. Oh man, that was good times. That was good times. We uh we hey, were down there in the in the middle of nowhere, uh in Study Butte. That's Texas, right. South Texas. How how far away was that trip for you? Uh, nine hundred and something million miles away. Nine. <laughs> I don't know. Nine. <laughs> nine. Was it nine? Nine hundred. Who was right in the? Who was right in the nines? I think it was uh, fourteen hours and just shy of fifteen hours from here. Yeah. 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 Yeah, Tony got some new glasses. They said 2022 on them. Yeah. <laughs> uh, surprised he doesn't have them on here. I don't know where mine are. I haven't unpacked the vehicle yet. So it's uh it's uh it's it's just one of those things. Hey Jeff, now thank you for joining us on the show. Oh man, uh we have both just got back from Big Bend National Park uh on a week long trip down there and Tony, you got to go home, and um, and, yeah. and you got to go home and unload and unwind and get your dogs and all that, and and because of this nasty COVID stuff, I got to go in my house for about two minutes, grab some clothes, and then go to my parents' house. And, you haven't uh, even seen your dog yet, have you? I have not even seen Bruiser. Bruiser oh, is wondering man. where his dad is. Yeah. Um, Bruiser is wondering where his dad is. He hey, Travis. Is, having a he's having a hard time he's in big time depression because he doesn't have anybody to play ball with mm -hmm. and um I, i'm gonna have to i'm gonna have to see my buddy pretty soon yeah i'm gonna have to see yeah. my buddy pretty soon but i think it's going to be tomorrow tomorrow i'm gonna get to see my buddy and uh then get to play with him a little bit and maybe get back to somewhat of a normal routine i hope i hope well I say normal. Who knows what normal is? <laughs> I don't know. But uh, I just want to say to everybody, man, uh, 2021, what a whirlwind of a year uh, that was. I look back on where I was a year ago and and where we are now with the show and pretty much everything, and things are so different now. And, yeah. And uh, I just – I'm real excited to be here. Uh uh, really thankful for all the sponsors that have come on and stayed with us and, and been unwavering with us since day one. Artemis has been here since since day one. Aaron has always been a true friend and and always has stuck by me and said, man, whatever you do, I want to be there. And, yeah. uh, and I'm, I'm really appreciative of that. Chris with More Expo, uh, he called me up several months ago and he said hey i want to be a part of your show uh he said i want my i want my poster right there behind you the whole time i said okay you got it you got it so uh so he jumped in and then we had action tracks casey came on and and i had casey on the show and i love casey he is such a neat guy if you ever, yeah, buddy. If you're ever at an event and action tracks is there and casey is there go up and talk to casey because he's got some of the coolest stories about Baja racing that will just keep you captivated. And that is no kidding. 
love hanging out with Casey. He is such a cool guy. We got to camp next to him and uh, Sir William Goes at Rendezvous. The, yeah. Both those guys are a hoot. They are a hoot now. Yeah. They are a hoot. And they can't yeah. be still. They're all the time over there, going <laughs> They're somewhere, all the time. doing yeah. this, going back, passing right. through, getting them a piece of bacon and saying yeah. thanks, and they're on their way. Uh, some cool guys. Um, Linson Solar, you've powered everything since the beginning. Um, Blue Seal Coffee, yeah, everybody knows me and knows I love coffee. And uh, so they have... They have been sponsoring the show for the past few months. Long Creek Overland's been there. John's doing a great job. We we um, we uh, world premiered the Bro Nose series, so we're gonna have that coming out. Uh, the Bro Nose, different things. Uh, back in the '80s, you know, there was this guy called Bo Jackson. Uh, he was a multi. Um, multi-sport multi guy sport. he knew everything yeah. and these 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 commercials came out the Bo Knows commercials right. Bo Knows baseball, Bo Knows football ball. well now, it's, now here in 2022 you're going to have the Bro Knows Bro Knows <laughs> um, and Howling Moon Tents and Awnings came on, came on and right here at the very end and love your stuff um, amazing products and we're going to have we're going to have some some big exciting news in coming days i talked to some guys today and um pretty pretty excited jared says he loves the bro nose graphic thank you jared and jared loves the bro nose because he created that's the bro right. nose graphic that's right um but we're gonna have some exciting news sponsors coming on making sure the show keeps going everybody's loving the show and they're excited about what 22 2022 might bring but i tell you awesome. the best part the best part of 2021 was bringing on Tony as my co-host. Tony, man, I, I love appreciate it. you being here. I appreciate love it. Thank you, you for having me. It's been a lot of fun. We got uh, Keith on here from Dallas. We got people on here from all over. But, Tony, would you like to mention some of the people that you uh, – Oh, Tony has his – he voted for the beer drinking goat mayor in Lajitas, Texas. Sure. Vote the goat, people. Vote, Vote the goat. goat. Vote the goat. And you he's, can he's actually, cool. a ballot box where you can vote for the goat. So that's right. He's cool. I got that same shirt. I love that shirt. But do you want to say something about the people that help sponsor you and keep you going? I show? sure would. I sure would. I'm, I'm very thankful and uh, appreciate all the support, support that we get. Um, uh, Pro Customs and Accessories. Uh, they're up here in Springdale, Arkansas. They do all kinds of, uh, you know, upgrades, not just Jeeps, but any kind of vehicle they'll do leather upholstery in your rig if you want but they uh they help sponsor some stuff on our gladiator build and we really appreciate uh you know everything that they've done for us um they uh they have another segment of their business called pro tire and automotive they do you know if you need repair and all that kind of stuff they do that too so hmm. uh, you know give them a holler if you're in the area also they're sponsoring a uh, a an event here on January fifteenth. It's kind of a, a little trail ride down in the in the Ozarks. So cool. uh, if you get on their Facebook page and everything, you, you can kind of check that out. But awesome. uh, Pro Customs and Accessories, uh, Tac Form. Tac Form is a company that makes accessory mounts, phone mounts, camera mounts, and stuff. They uh, fully sponsored all of our mounts and stuff in both rigs. Wow. So, uh, you know, Nick, Nick with TAC Form has just been great to deal with, and uh, we absolutely love them. So if you're looking for any of that kind of stuff, go check them out. Um, Midland Radio, they, they uh, you know, another one we are super, super honored to have. Uh, they sponsored the radio for us on the Gladiator. Um, of course, they don't really, don't really need to do any introduction with them. You know, pretty much everybody yeah. knows what they do. But, um so I, I i don't know if you use onyx off-road or not but uh they they kind of hooked me up with uh their one of their premier subscriptions you know to kind of help help with the build their trail system uh in their in their oh. app so that's been really really fun to learn and use and We've got a lot of other affiliate partnerships that are worth noting. Uh, EcoFlow, GoPro, Grunt Style, 511, Goal Zero, 
uh, some Amazon stuff, more details to come on all of that. But uh, our uh, the Bats Off Road website is currently under. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know, saw that Porter, today. Yeah, you? another 50 watt radio. 50 watt. That's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, but uh, the Bats Off Road website's under reconstruction. Uh, but we're going to have a section for for all of that, all our affiliates and sponsors, and and uh, you know discount links and all that kind of stuff. So uh, awesome. Uh, anyway, awesome. we'll be well, selling our own uh, merch there too. But. The uh, overlandphilosopher.com is up, and if you want some patches or stickers or anything like that, you can go there, and I'll be glad to send you one. Um, Heck yeah. Jared said they're releasing the 50-watt radio this week. I saw uh, that. I know it. Uh, that is a r really neat-looking um, radio. I like the looks of it. It, yeah. it doesn't look very big. It looks right. you know, small. They, they've, they're packing a lot of wattage in a smaller package. Yeah. Um, but... I tell you what, the 40 watt, the 40 watt, I have to listen to a lot of stuff that I don't want to listen to because it reaches out there not only to talk, but also to listen. So that, yeah, we, uh, that we heard a lot of stuff a, this weekend, didn't we? We did. Yeah, we week. did. Um, sounded kind of shady. So we yeah. got off there. We got yeah. off there. Hello, Kara. Thank you for joining us. Hold on. Uh, I don't know if Kara is back from uh, their trip to Big Bend or not. They stayed a couple of days after we were there. Uh, I don't know if you saw Matt riding the donkey. Uh, I think that's <laughs> traveling home on. So it I did. I did. That was yeah. fun. But, uh, but anyway, we have just got back from this trip, and we wanted to take uh, – it's probably going to take a couple shows to talk about this because there was so yeah. much stuff down there to see and do. Uh, I talked to a guy last night. He said, man, I was down there for four days, and that was plenty for us. And and I thought, man, you must have not been to all the stuff um, that um, that we did. Uh, Travis said, hey, Joey, I know you do a lot, but any thoughts on starting an Overland Discord? That's, you know, that's a possibility. Uh, we could do that. I use Discord. Uh, do you use Discord, Tony? No. Discord is an app uh, where people can talk um it's not social media it's just an app where people can talk we use it for for different things and um and you know that is a possibility that might be something that we could do um that it kind of replaces or takes the takes the place of instagram or facebook or facebook messenger or anything like that so only, only certain people you can let in so that's that's a possibility that's a good question Travis. yeah Am I able to watch hey, the show again later? Yes. Uh, anywhere um, on Bats Off Road Facebook, on the Overland Philosopher Facebook, or on either one of our YouTube channels. Uh, when we're off, it's there forever. So you can yep. go on there and watch the show. Dylan's, yeah. a, Dylan's a cool dude. He's got a really nice build. We, we met him and his family out in Colorado last year. Oh, cool. Uh, we met them on Black Bear Pass. Uh, but, yeah. Yeah. Anyway. I got um, pictures today. You remember when we were down at the Starlight Theater? <laughs> and I yeah. went down there to do something at my vehicle, and I was gone for a long time. And I told you a guy that was there looked at it, and he was like, man, can I take pictures of it stuff? Yeah. yeah. He found me on Instagram and sent me those pictures today. Yeah. He sent me thought, mine, too. Yeah. Did he really? Awesome. Yeah. Well, very yeah. cool. I, I thought that was cool. He was a young kid maybe 15, 16 years old, and uh, sent me those pictures, and I thought, man, that's awesome. I appreciate you doing that. Yeah. Um, just, Kara says we already got plans for the next trip. Um, these guys, have fun and ride on, said I saw both of your rigs in Terlingua, and they were so dope. Oh, and that's him. Have fun and ride on. That's, that's the guy it. who took the pictures. That's man, it. and I want to tell you on here, thank you for doing that. That was really cool of you to do that. Um, and I know Tony, Tony's rig is a lot better than mine, and, and it's so much cooler than mine. But and, and we both have had people stop us and want to take pictures, but nobody has ever sent them to me like you did. And I want to tell you thank you. I appreciate you. Yeah. That. that was cool. And I appreciate you being on the show. Yeah, uh, Lester, appreciate you being here, man. Thanks for coming in from, uh, yeah. from Oklahoma. He uh, his name is Braden Taft, by the way. Braden Taft. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, I know yeah. on uh, Instagram he goes by, I think it's Have Fun and Right On. I think yeah. that's right. 
Yeah. Because I, I remember talking to him today and telling him thank you for that. that yeah, was he he cool. was actually he actually looked me up. Uh, he was sending me messages. Uh, oh yeah, Dylan's got a young one. He he's got he's got a brand new baby. Brand oh. new baby. I, he, that probably I don't know. Better you than me, Dylan. Yeah. Better you. <laughs> actually, actually, he, he maybe seven or eight months or so. Anyway, oh, but yeah, yeah. Uh, Brandon was texting me while we were at dinner at the Starlight. Oh, okay, cool. So, Very yeah. cool. Well, like I was saying, uh, we took a trip uh, back in. It was like September or so. I started looking for a place to go for Thanksgiving, and I said I want to go down to big bend because everybody says that from late october to early march that's the time to go because you cannot go between march and august because it's too stinking hot and the rainy season is june and july so yeah. it was uh, i started looking then and everything was booked i couldn't find any places to stay got really frustrated and then I said, well, look, maybe we can go find a place over Christmas. And so I got to look in and Tony was planning on going on a different trip to New Mexico and stuff like that. But we were going to end up in the same place um, around Big Ben. And so I told Tony way back then, I said, y'all better be looking because I don't know. Everything's booked. I don't know where you would stay. And so I got to got to research and doing some things. Well, I got frustrated and just you know, kind of halfway gave up on it. And then uh, somehow, and I don't remember who mentioned it. Uh, it may have been Aaron from Artemis because he had went out with Mountain State Overland and he said that when these guys travel, they use this app called Hip Camp to find places to stay when they travel. And so I said, well, I'm going to check that out. So I got on Hip Camp. Well, there's tons of places to stay mm -hmm. yeah. down there. It's private land. Yep. And there was probably about 30 or 40 different options for us to stay down there um, and just camp. And a lot of it is just private property. People have fields. I say fields. It would be a field here, but down there it's just dirt and cactus is all. It yeah. Is. Right. Um, and, you know, and they just have places to drive and you drive between the cactuses and you set your camp up. And I thought, you know, this will give us a place to stay. This will give mm -hmm. us an option because my number one rule I do not want to stay in a Walmart parking lot. Um, <laughs> and I don't want to stay in there at night, but I'm not staying all, there all week. And plus, there, there were no Walmarts within 150 miles of where we were, mm -mm, at no. least. Um, but I do not want to drive 14 hours with no place to stay. And yeah. so I at least wanted to get a place to stay. So I found this place called Hemp Camp, and we looked up this place called Coyote Crossing. And it had a lot of really good reviews on it. A lot of people had stayed there. It was $22 a night. Yeah. So it was actually the same price or cheaper than it was to stay in the park. And I thought, you know, I'm just going to take a chance on this. I'm a visual learner and I do not like booking things that I really have a lot of questions about. But I yep. booked this and then I texted the guy who was there his name is rob he's the what, what do they call him they call him the uh, host he's the, the host. host the camp host yeah he's so actually the owner him. of the property too right. but he's the host on hip camp and I, I texted him and i said um hey uh just coming down here want to make sure that you know we're good and he texted me within five minutes and he said oh man you're good you're all set up you're coming in on this day you're leaving on this day blah 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 okay then we kept getting messages about well there's a burn band uh, you do this so i texted him and i said hey there i'm gonna see there's a burn bank can we not have a fire and he said well you know you can't have an open fire but if you've got a thump something off the ground and then closed then you can have an uh, actual campfire i was like whoa that's awesome and we would have never known that and so it yeah. was um it was really a pleasurable experience dealing with him right off the bat and it made me comfortable about where we were going and so it got to closer to time and tony you, you uh 
you kind of had some doubts about the, the, the trip that you were going on. It was a lot of miles and a short amount of time, a lot of driving. And so I said, well, hey, won't you just come go with us? Yeah. And um, and you and Arla talked about it, and y'all y'all booked a place down there, and I mean it was on. Yeah. What um, what what made you what made you want to take the chance on going with us and and going to Big Ben? What was running through your mind at that time? Well, so uh, it kind of backed the clocks up a little bit to last last spring break in March. We um, you know, Big Ben's always been on our our radar, a place to go. And uh, we 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 almost cut our spring break trip, or uh, cut it short where we were at there at, at uh, Padre Island, and we almost made the trek over, uh, but but it was midweek and we knew we wouldn't really have a whole lot of time there, so we didn't do that. But it anyway, it's always been, you know, one of the places we wanted to go, and then um, when I saw chad chad morris with trail exploration he was putting together a a trip that encompassed big bend but also went on over to um new mexico um uh, you know i i was so excited about that trip and and i knew you know back then when it when we first started talking about it it was just going to be me because i didn't think arlo was going to have the vacation time to go and uh you know, so we, we, you know, I signed up for that and I thought it'd be, you know, thought it'd be a really good trip, you know, and then as, as kind of the, 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 the fall progressed, we, we realized that meant that she was going to be able to go with me. And then, then we kind of started looking at the itinerary a little bit and kind of felt like maybe that might've been a little bit, um, you know, aggressive for, for us. So we, uh, we decided it might be best to break that trip up into a couple of different trips and just focus on one, one yeah. thing. And I, and I knew you were going, so I was like, yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's more our speed, you know, yeah. I didn't want to hold those guys up. Chad, man, he's, he's, he blows up and at, now. He's up he and at him at the goes. crack we, of dawn. That dude. We would get he, up and uh, and not even yeah. get coffee going good, and they would be pulling out. You know. Oh yeah. Like, yeah. Grace, those guys yeah. are really wanting to get after. Yeah. Uh, he, Bo he, Thompson on is on here. You remember Bo? We met him at the Overlook, uh, in the van from Bentonville, or right there where we were having uh, lunch over the Rio Grande. I do. I do now. I forgot. I forgot his. Yeah. He was Bo Thompson. Heck yeah, hey Bo. Bo, yeah. thanks for being on here with us. That's uh, crazy. My wife, uh, my wife wants to say hey to you as well. Well, that's that's super cool. Um, you know, that's that, I love how it just fell together. Yeah. I love how the planning fell together. Um, you know, our wives get along. You and I get along real well. We're about the same speed. Uh, yeah. We really don't have an agenda. We really don't have plans. So we thought, hey, that worked out great. Um, I knew that Aaron from Artemis and his family were coming down, going to be there a day after us. And Matt and Kara were going to go come down and be down there at the end of the week. Yeah. And so when, when you all decided to come, it really became um, so, uh, something that I really look forward to. I, I thought was going to be a special time because we were all going to be down there at the same time to spend New Year's together. Yeah. And so that was going to be something that, you know, I really dreamed of uh, taking a uh, almost a Christmas slash New Year's trip uh, to a place out in the middle of nowhere and celebrate it with some of the best friends we have in the whole world. Yeah. Uh, so it really came together, and uh, I was very excited about how it all came together. And uh, I really want to talk about that, but let's first pause for station identification. We will be right back. Hi, I'm Barry Henderson with Trailback Trailers. I'm Adam with Oki Overland. This is John with Long Creek Overland. I'm Drew with Rock Squashes Out. I'm Casey with U.S. Action Track. Hi, I'm Joe. And I'm Misty from the day we make. I'm Jeremiah from Overland Pioneer. Hi, we're Jessica and Jorge with Woodwork Wonder. It's Chris from Moore Expo. I'm Misty from Lady Overlander Radio. You're watching. And you're watching. And you're watching. You're watching. Are watching. And you're watching. Are watching. And you're watching. Professor and friends. 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 Joey the professor and friends. Professor and friends. Professor and friends. The professor and friends. The professor and friends. Professor and friends. 
sponsored by Artemis Overland Hardware in Springfield, Missouri. More Expo, April 8th through the 10th, 2022. Big Iron Overland Rally, first weekend in June of next year. U.S. Action Tracks, Blue Cell Coffee Roasters, Linson Solar, Howling Moon Tents and Awnings, and our good friends at Long Creek Overland. Thank you for joining our show. Let's get this party started. I want to thank everybody for uh, doing that for us on the show, for coming on and uh, just taking time to do a little intro for us. That really means a lot and adds a little bit of humor and a lot of uh, entertainment to the show and gives us the time to take a break and give our vocal cords just a little <laughs> bit of a rest. This oh, be man. Drink. Get a little drink. So, yeah. man, putting this putting this trip together was was really fun you know i thought at the beginning it was just going to be connie and i and um and then y'all ended up coming along aaron came along and matt and kira came along for a night with us and uh so we really got to share this experience with uh with some friends now i know that you had a lot to prepare <laughs> before this trip and you only had a couple weeks because it was it was only like 12 or 13 days before the day that we left that you decided to go. So, I mean, it was like, bam, bam. And it was right in the middle of Christmas. So you had a lot to get done before you left, didn't you? Yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. It, it was, uh, <laughs> it, it, yeah, right. You go with the flow, hun. But, uh, we, uh, you know, we went from it being a solo trip, just me and the gladiator to, um, you know, my, my wife and daughter coming along with, with me in the gladiator. And then she won that tent on the blue line overland drawing. And then, you know, started thinking about the future a little bit and, um, you know, where that tent was going to end up and what she was going to use it for and everything. And then we decided to take two vehicles. So we had to prepare two vehicles, uh, for this trip. And one of them needed an oil change before we left. And then we figured out, you know, the oil change guy mm -hmm. re revealed to us that we needed a, a CV joint in the front drive shaft and some brake pads and all that kind of good stuff. So on top of packing and doing all the prep and all that stuff, uh, we had to do a little unexpected maintenance uh, yeah. three days before Christmas, which Pro Customs helped us out with uh you know, it, it was amazing. I, I called, I called them at four o'clock in the afternoon. I think it was Tuesday, and he said, "All right, I'll, let's see, we'll see what we can find. I have it over here in the morning." And uh, he had the parts brought in the next morning. They put them on that day, and uh, within 24 hours, he he had me going. Wow. So that's awesome. That's that's good to have people that will work with you like that. that yeah, buddy. Actually, yeah. understand what you're going through. Yeah. Uh, that's, yeah. Yeah. Arlo wants to know where you're going to next. <laughs> uh, I don't know. The uh, usually the the next like planned trip would be spring break, and we don't really have. Oh, Porker says uh, West Virginia, huh? That's that's where we're going. We've that's never been to going. West Virginia. Well, well I, I haven't. Need to Arlo come. used to live in Virginia. You need to come. Yeah. That would be an awesome trip for y'all. Yeah. They are some great hosts. Uh, they take very good care of us, and uh, I'm sure they would love to have you. Porker, uh, and I've told it on the show before, uh, he has, uh, when, when he and I first got together, we rode motorcycles together. Um, and he had a, uh, a Ford Escape that he drove all over the place. He installs um, emergency lighting. He has a company out there called Autotronics, and I will give them a shout out because they have installed all of the lights that are on my vehicle and done a great job. Very nice. professional. And uh, they have a shop there by his house where they do all that. But in working on my vehicle and, and seeing all that we have got into, he dabbed a little bit in the off-road and overland and he said it really took him back to his childhood of camping with his dad and things like that so that's what it is for me i went back in um i went back in june and uh we actually were able to take a day or two um before they started working on my vehicle and we went up into some of the mountains 
uh, opened up the awning and, and different things, flew the drone over, took some pictures, and he caught the bug. Yeah. He caught the bug. Uh, we went to Tennessee in July. We did some off-roading there, did some exploring, and when we came back, it wasn't two or three months, and they traded vehicles, got him a forerunner, and now he's got him a new Tacoma, so they got a forerunner and a Tacoma. Oh, boy. And they are neck deep, and he's yep. getting packages in every day that his wife don't know about. So it happens. Uh, it happens. Uh, he is ready for us to come out there and do some exploring with us, and I know that, that uh, he would love to have you all out there to come with us. They are some Yeah, some we might have people. to do that. We might have to do that. I Generally, you, spring break, we're here. looking for some warm weather, but I don't know. We just came back from plenty of warm weather. So, you know, yeah. and that was one of the reasons why I wanted to go down there. Yeah. But who knew that Christmas Day in Arkansas was going to be almost 70 degrees? Right. And um, and we go, we, we start heading south. And, and I told my wife, I said, we're going to escape cold weather that's not even here. But, right. you know, we, we, who knew? Who knew? Right. You know, because yeah. in Arkansas, it's, it's different every five minutes, but that's kind of the way it works. But, uh, you, uh, West Virginia is beautiful. I highly recommend it. I've been out there multiple times now, and it's one of those places that you could live out there a lifetime and never see all the good stuff that there is. In fact, Porker is is really experiencing that just like I am in Arkansas uh, right now. I've lived here my whole life, and every time I go out, I see and discover things that I never knew was there. And he's yeah. experiencing that in West Virginia right now too. And it's exciting for him. And I love that for him being able to, to do that. And, uh, Connie said, you can get those yellow eyed peas we had at camp. So, uh, that's where Ooh. we get, them. <laughs> you know, I don't, don't want to get off track here. Just something real quick. You know, something else that was, is exciting to me right now, since we got back from this trip. What's that? Oh yeah. Yeah. I went through Sunday night and I put all the stuff in there that, that we picked up all yep. the stickers and stuff. Isn't that neat? And it is a neat book. I love it this. It really never is. Even, for, never for even those who don't existed. know what he's talking about. That's the national parks passport. Um, it's a passport to your national parks and all of the national parks have a stamp and they call it a cancellation. And you go to the place where that is and you put the cancellation in there and it has in there the date and time um, of the time that you visited. And they also have the stamps that you can get from each park and put in there as well. So it's a very neat collectible. Travis said he has the small one. That's the one my wife has. They also have the little coins that you can collect that my wife collects. I have the same one that Tony has. And um, I've got... Uh, well over a hundred stamps in there from the places that we've been probably the last five or six years, but it is a neat place that, um, and a lot of the state parks are doing that now. Uh, I know Arkansas state parks are doing it. They have a, a passport that you can get to get a stamp from all the state parks. It is uh, neat as well. And he said, there's a national park there as well. So that's, that's why I brought that up. Cause you know, <laughs> I might need to go there while yeah. we are there. And so. there's also uh, two or three on the way and two okay. or three on the way back. So uh, right. there's quite a few uh, that we've been to in Kentucky. Uh, Cause we always go to uh, West Virginia through Kentucky. Uh, but anyway, that's for another show. Yeah. Uh, back and, on track. Uh, Sorry. We'll right. talk about that. We can talk about that later. Uh, but that is something that we can look forward to. Porker, I appreciate you inviting him to come out there. That's that's pretty cool of you. Yeah, buddy. But the preparation for this going down and and being down there was was something that I had never experienced before because I had never traveled like this around a holiday. We've never and done anything trying like to this. get everything done mm -hmm. while also having to prepare for uh, the biggest holiday of the year was something that really threw a monkey wrench into something I'd never experienced before. I had to take my trailer to the welding shop to get uh, something welded on there for the water port. Um, I, my diesel heater had quit on me a couple days before we left, so I had to work on it and try to get it going. I actually drove to Tulsa, Oklahoma to pick one up from Yona Adventure Gear, and I got to see uh, Jeff from Bad Egg Adventure Co. out there while I was out there, so it was a good time. Yeah. But it was also a full day that I could have been doing something else. So 
it was it was something all the time. Yeah. Trying to get ready. Yeah. And um and plus having to get ready for Christmas, it was it was stressful. Yeah. It was stressful. It was. You know, I, I've got to say here too, uh our family, you know, when we when we started talking about going you know, we realize that usually the night before we leave is when we do a lot of our packing. Mm-hmm. Well, the night before this trip was Christmas and night. And yeah. that's usually the time that we spend with Arla's parents. So, you know, her, her, her mom and dad were just amazing, um, you know, and accommodated us when we, we asked if we could do, you know, like lunch with them instead of dinner so that we could be back home. Uh, yeah. You know, so really, really grateful for them. Her parents are the best. But, yeah, uh, yeah, that was that was the same way for us. We spent the yeah. night before we left at my parents uh, with my, and we usually do it in the morning. But my daughter, who is now a nurse, has now been put on shift work, and she didn't get off till seven, and so we were there till almost ten o'clock. Oh, and wow. so we either had we either had to have everything packed and ready to go before we went. Mm-hmm. But we had to do it really late at night. And if you've seen the process that I have to go through to get my trailer out of the garage, <laughs> it's it's one of those things, uh, you know, just barely fits. It's a modern miracle. <laughs> it barely fits. And I have to flatten the tires and back it in, then air the tires back up. And when I pull it out, I have to flatten the tires and pull it out, then I air the tires back up. And so it's yeah. a it's a long, drawn-out process that we, I don't like doing right before I leave, especially when it's hot. Yeah, we, we did that with our trailer, our last trailer. Yeah, we had to air it down and that still wasn't even enough. Those tires were so, so stiff. It still wouldn't air down enough. We had to pile weight in the trailer to get it compressed so we could roll it in. Oh, well, I had the weight. I definitely yeah. had the weight. Yeah. <laughs> I had the weight. Um, and it wasn't anyway. that way until we put the rooftop tent on. But the way that we've got it set up now is perfect for us. We love how it's set up now. But I still had all this other stuff. I had tried to get a regear done on my FJ because I knew that I was going to be pulling the trailer down there over 2,000 miles. And I really wanted to upgrade the, the gears on the FJ to make it pull better. But yeah. for some reason, they can't get Toyota gears. And I tried for September and October and November and no gears. And uh, and Matt got his Gladiator. He got gears done within two weeks of getting it. And I was like, this yeah. just ain't fair. Yeah. So What's anyway, this Sunday, finally, this coming Sunday, I take my FJ down to Blood, Blood Connection. And they're going to put gears in it. But it was, you know, I tried to get that done. I had to, the diesel thing to worry about. I went camping right before Christmas, found out I had battery issues again. I couldn't fig- figure out my battery. I bought a brand new lithium ion battery. But I'm not an electrical guy, so I didn't know a whole lot about this. And I didn't have the right things to charge my battery it went all the way down to nothing. So I had to go through the whole process of taking my other batteries out and putting them back in the ones that I just took out. So, you know, it was one thing after another, after another, trying to get everything situated. And then when we put my tent on, we put the slats on backwards. So I took a day, took my tent off, took the slat, put the slats around. And I ended up, that was so much stinking work. But yeah, it created so much space on the FJ because I was able to put two Artemis or front runner boxes on the back and carry what used to be inside the vehicle outside the vehicle. And anytime you can do that, um, it was, you know, it was amazing. Plus, yeah, the rear bumper that I ordered in March decided to be delivered on December the 23rd. Yeah. So here I am, got 900 pounds of steel sitting in my living room. <laughs> that, and and people said, and Porker sent me a message. He said, I can't believe you ain't putting that bumper on. I can't believe you ain't putting that bumper on. I was like, man, I got Christmas. I got all this stuff to pack. I've got so much to do. It was just the timing of it Yeah, was something that I had never dealt with before. And so, I mean, if it had come in on the 21st or 22nd, you might, you might have could have got it done. I might have could have got it done. But, you know. <laughs> Uh, I got out <laughs> this afternoon. I got out the instructions on how to put this thing together, and I am so glad that I did not try to attempt this. Oh yeah, it is. It is a dual swing out rear bumper, and it has uh, two jerry can mounts. 
It's got um, a whole bunch of other mounts and stuff on it that, you know, I splurged and got the one I wanted. And with all these extra parts and stuff, I bet there's 500 bolts in there. And I thought, oh, my yeah. goodness, this is not going to be. This is not going to be something that I would want to tackle in a day and a half. So, and they're probably every one of them put on with a lock nut. I guarantee you. I guarantee <laughs> you. So, you know, I want, to, I want to remind everybody that this is a listener-driven show, and we love your comments and questions. And is uh, if you have traveled or done an overlanding trip around the holiday, how did that affect you? I want to know. Yeah, uh, because it was it was hard on us to try to get everything done, to get try to get everything packed and loaded, and try to get presents wrapped and and different things like that. Now last year, because of COVID, we spent Thanksgiving in West Virginia with Porker and and Sasha, his wife. But that wasn't an overlanding trip. We actually stayed in their home, so we didn't have to pack a whole lot of you know stuff. We just um, we just took off and went and we went off and did some exploring and some off-roading while we were there. But this was different because we were going to be in a place that had no amenities, you know, $22 a night. You don't get much. Um, yeah. We got uh, a toilet, which I didn't know that we were going to get, um, you know, and the, and it was pretty much like a, an elevated platform with a hole in it that went into a bucket. That's what they call a toilet. <laughs> yeah. So uh, no no uh, electricity, so we had to take solar. No water, so we had to take water. Yeah. Um, and so when you're going on trips like that, there's so much more involved in yeah. what you have to take. Yep. So anyway, it was it was something. It was something, but the timing of it was really what threw the curve on me. Um, and and Porker says it cannot be worse than that front bumper. The front bumper on my vehicle is probably the worst thing that I've ever had to take off and put on. Um, the The way that they've got the bolting of it set up, you cannot see, your hands can't get in there, and it is just a nightmare. Um, the rear bumper you, is made by the same company. You're in there trying to get get a you're, bolt you're started. Like this. You're yeah. like this. And, yeah. you know, and I tried it, and he tried it, and then I tried it again, and he tried it. And I bet it took us four hours to get one bolt started. I yeah. mean, it was just unbelievable, horrible. And so uh, Connie's laughing at him. That's funny. But all <laughs> says it was worth it. And it I agree. I agree it was worth it because, you know, there's just some things and you really don't know what you're getting into. You really don't know if all this time and money for gas is going to be worth it. But once you get down there, it feels like the week goes by so stinking fast. Yeah, it just flies it, it, by because it, it, everything it. is going perfect. Yeah, and we had that talk earlier. Um, you know how how we got down there, and then all of a sudden it was Thursday, and and then Friday, and we thought, crap, we got to leave tomorrow. And uh, yeah, so you know it was, it was the timing of it was uh, was just was just really weird for us. Yeah, Jared, Jared, right there. Uh, they've got a cool trailer that XLR, their trailer that they went to get. That was uh, that's cool. I don't know if you saw, but uh, their their news on Christmas morning. Did you I see didn't. that, Jared, Jared and Kayla? I didn't. They got engaged. What? Yes. How awesome is that? I know. Well, congratulations. It. Yes. Congratulations. Congratulations, Another you guys. We seem to have a world premiere every week here on uh, the <laughs> we try to. Experience show. We uh, try Jared to. Cook and Kayla Hover, congratulations on your engagement. We are excited that you are listening to the show, but we're more excited that you have found your forever friend, your forever partner to go on these adventures with. And that's right. And I'm, I'm excited for you. I'm excited for you because there's something very special about having somebody that shares the same loves and passions that you do. That's very special. Yep. And, um, and I'm excited for you. Let's see. Need good ideas for good destination weddings. Oh man. Huh? Uh, I don't know, but if you take me with you, I can marry you in any of the 50 States. I'm licensed and ordained. Listen to that. Woo right there. Wow. Sounds like a trip. But anyway, like trip. anyway, anyway, 
Um, Back on topic. Now, yeah. Uh, now y'all are coming Sorry. from Northwest Arkansas. Yeah. That's a, that's a pretty good haul for you. And I'm coming from central Arkansas. Um, but it was really odd to me that the time and the miles were almost exactly the same for us. Yeah. Um, you, you yeah, went I west thought that over was in Oklahoma and I had to go east a little bit around Little Rock. Um, but I thought that was really odd that yeah. the times for us to get there were, were pretty much the same. Yeah. Now, what is your preference as far as the length of travel for a day? I know that was something that made you shy away from the other trip. So when you and your wife are traveling together, is it different than when y'all drive separate? Uh, what's 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 about your limit for a day? Uh, well, uh, first off, this is the first time we've traveled separate. OK, um, so this this one was kind of you know, in that regard, it was a little bit different, but we both looked at it the same, uh, which is that we, it, it's not going to be something that we would take off and drive as far in two vehicles because we can't split the driving duties. Mm. Um, you know, so when we go on the way there, we generally try to break it up. If it's a, you know, keep it, you know, eight to 10 hours. Um, we, we have gone a lot further than that. Um, you know, last year when we came back from Colorado, we drove from Ure to Prairie Grove in one day. I mean, in one shot. And Arla actually did most of it. Um, it's just kind of the way it worked out. But we yeah. we wanted to get home and get, you know, get back quick and didn't want to stop. So we drove the yeah. 16, 17 hours it was. And that, that yeah. was a long day. That was too long. long day. Yeah. That's a long so, walk. Uh, we, we, we've tend, done that as gonna, well. Yeah, we've we're going to. Well. We're probably going to lean towards breaking it up for the most part. And, you know, it just. Uh, I know that a lot of people, and, and us included, and, and if you're out there and, and you have a, uh, you know, a limit that you put on yourself or you try to break it up into one or two days, Lester says uh, six or seven hours max, depending on the distance between camp, Scott, camp spots. Yeah. Um, Travis said, uh, I had drove from Orlando to North and Central Texas a ton of my life straight through, but now I'm older. Nine hours is about all I want to do. Uh, I'm, yeah. I'm about the same way, you know. Um, same, Travis. Yeah. Um, I'm an old truck driver. Uh, I drove a truck, uh, uh, I drove from uh, Little Rock to Dallas five days a week. And if you add up those miles, that's a lot of miles. Yeah. And, um, you know, I was over the, over the road truck driver for a long time. I've done six iron butt uh rides on motorcycles which is at least a thousand miles in 24 hours but it's I'm, I'm over that i'm over that and you know back then all i wanted all i could think about was the destination and you know if we're going to big bend from little rock big bend is all i thought about yeah and i thought I, that was where i wanted to be i did not want to stop I did not want to, you know, we would time our stops where we got gas and food at the same time. We did not stop and eat. We did not sit down and eat. We did not stop and stay at a hotel. We we went as far as we could go. If we got tired, we pulled over on the side of the road. We laid our head down for a couple hours. We woke up and we kept going. Yeah. And that was just the way that we did it. And uh, <laughs> Sasha says, Porker is such a control freak. There's no splitting driving when we enter together. And that's true, Porker. Uh, does not like it when other people drive, uh, and it was it was kind of funny when when I was there that he went out in the FJ with me, and I and I looked at him. I said, "Are you going to let me drive my vehicle?" And he's going to ride with me. So I, I thought that was pretty funny. Um, but you know, I, I'm I'm not that way anymore, and and I like how we split it up because we did about 500 miles the first day and about 300 miles the second day, um, ish, uh, a little bit more. Uh, than that probably we drove to we met in Colorado City Texas yeah. uh, which was about 530 miles I think for us uh, we left at five got there about three o'clock in the afternoon y'all rolled in about an hour and a half after we did yeah um, and so that was actually a decent day and, and now that I'm older and I don't know if you're out there listening and you're you're as old as me I'm 50 and a half i'm still counting half years 
Um, but I actually try to take in a little bit of the scenery on the way now. I mean, that's yeah. part of what I like to look at. Is that some do y'all do y'all try to look around while you're driving and, and see the different buildings, see the different things? Is that something that y'all do while you're traveling as well? Some. Yeah, I mean it just kind of depend depends on which direction we're going. I mean, if you're going along Kansas through Kansas, there's not much to look at. West to Oklahoma and out there in the panhandle, it's about the same. Yeah. Um, you know, so I mean, but yeah, we we do when 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 the opportunity arises. I would say something that kind of along what Lester said, you know, six to seven hours, it does depend on, yeah, it does depend on where we're staying. Mm -hmm. If we're going from camp to camp, yeah, six to seven hours is, is a good day when you got to break down camp and then set up yes. camp, you know, yeah, but if you're going from, from your home and your next stop is a hotel, we'll, we'll stretch it out a little further. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah and I visited, visit. the Connie says, uh, Midland and Odessa, not looking. Um, I had this visit with my dad when we got back because I had to go to my parents' house. Um, but, you know, I made the comment to y'all and, and to Connie, I said, Midland and Odessa is worse than driving through Kansas. At least there's something clean in Kansas to look at. These, it was just dirty, nasty trash everywhere. Yeah. Um, it, for about 200 miles, it was just, goodness, this is tough to look at, yeah. <laughs> but you know, that's, that's the part of the world and people live in it. Um, and you know, it's, it's a whole different world down there than what we're used to. And that's, that's a little bit different perspective too, if you're by yourself or if you're in a group and you're the lead vehicle versus one that's following. Because I, I don't really remember that much about my, uh, Odessa and, and Midland because I was looking at the vehicle in front of me a lot. You know. Well, so. when we went through Odessa and Midland, you were so excited about your 21 miles per gallon. That's all yeah. you to focus on. Yeah, because, I probably was pretty excited about uh, it. <laughs> you know, what we went through the day before, we were, we were so excited that we were actually having an easy time down through there. But uh, we talked about gas mileage a lot and gas prices and, and things like that. But we made it to Colorado City, Texas. Uh, it was crazy how we traveled uh, 900 miles one way. You went through three states, and I only went through two. Um, and Texas is just huge. Uh, it's just so stinking big. And I remember back uh, when I was doing the long-distance motorcycle riding, and the guys would do the east coast to west coast and they said that when you got to the texas state line you actually got this horrible feeling in your stomach because you knew it would be over a day before you got out of texas if you rode yeah. straight through uh, because it's so far across from east to west and well, that, um, it was that huge the, yeah that's what we ran into last year when i was telling you about how we were thinking about cutting it cutting our trip short at spring break and at Padre, Padre island and going i thought yeah we'll just run over to big big bend you don't just run over to big bend from Padre <laughs> island it's nine and a half hours from there yeah and i yeah. thought holy cow i've never driven nine and a half hours and stayed in the same state right ever right and you weren't even on the tips no <laughs> no so oh. yeah that's why we didn't go to big bend back then but the the one thing that that everybody needs to be prepared for if you do travel down there is the wind was just yeah. brutal it was yeah. brutal there's there's a lot of the wind turbines down there and they're there for a reason uh because uh the first day uh, we took all interstate down there. I know y'all took uh, farm roads and back roads, but the wind just blew us uh, 20 to 30 mile an hour headwind straight in our face. I was getting down into third gear trying to pull some of those little bitty hills on the interstate. Yeah. How was it where y'all were? Yeah. I mean, we, we, there were periods, uh, you know, both going down and coming back where we'd, we were, you know, the wind was a little bit better than, other times uh so we fluctuated i mean there was one time where i was getting you know 
I think down in the 11 mile per yeah. gallon range. So yeah. we were fighting wind too. It just, you know, when you, when you're coming down from Arkansas, you, you, you going straight at the wind versus when you change, you got a little bit of a side wind. So it gets better. Um, yeah. It just depends on the weather. When you go, sometimes you don't have the, the, We mentioned the wind to Kara and Matt, uh, told them to be prepared for it. Um, and they said that they didn't have any, any wind issues at all. Now uh, coming back, uh, in the same area, we actually went through a, a huge dust storm. Uh, it was yeah. crazy. Everything was brown. You couldn't see very far. Everybody had their lights on. It's crazy. Um, I've never seen a dust storm know, like that. The wind was about 40 miles at our back, and, and we were getting 21 miles a gallon again, and then 20 miles up the road. We hit a 40-mile-an-hour wind right in our face for 150 miles, and I'm like, how does this happen? There's not could, any hills out here to make the wind change direction. I don't understand this. I could tell when I was following you, I could tell when I was going to need to steer hard into the wind because I could see you. You would go like that, and this like <laughs> half a second, it would hit me. So I was just yeah steering into yeah, it. Boy, it was it, it grabbed a hold of me in that trailer and just tossed us around uh, anywhere. And yeah. yeah, Kara, I understand you were pulling tank. Matt told me they got eight miles a gallon on the way down there. That's uh that's tough that's that's pulling a lot of weight that's pulling yeah. a lot of weight that's for sure yeah. but um we made it to study butte texas on um monday we left on sunday got there on monday i got there mid-afternoon ended up being better than i could have imagined um it was a beautiful spot um coyote crossing was um exactly what i had hoped it would be it was a great spot to stay. Study Butte, put that down on your on your list. It's right at the crossroads where you take um, either go into the national park or you go to Torlinga, Torlingua, and over there where the goat mayor is, and also go over to um, the uh, in Lajitas, and Lajitas, uh, also yeah. go over to the state park. So it's right there at the crossroads. Has a good place for gas. It has a great. Um, hardware store that has groceries uh, you can get uh, water there for a, a nickel a gallon um, or 10 cents a gallon 10, I think cents, 10, yeah. 10 cents a gallon and uh, so and you can also get a shower at BJ's RV park for five dollars so it's a great area to stay in so I was very pleased with the area that we that we stayed in yeah uh, it has an art gallery that looks like a Mexican restaurant <laughs> yeah that's um, no we doubt tried to eat at but they didn't have any food there we pulled right in there like we knew what we were doing, didn't we? We did, uh, <laughs> but we went on down the road, and um, they, had, they had a really good restaurant there in town. Tons of places to stay. It is uh, it was a really good, really good area to stay in. So yeah. I was very pleased with that, and uh, that was just by chance um, that that we found that and that and you know where that was because of course if you look that stuff up on the map on Hip Camp, it's really hard to to try to negotiate where everything is if you've never been there now i know yeah. where everything is and yeah. um and you know there's also a, a huge variety of places that you can stay there really nice villas um that we saw there there were some teepees some yurts those little a-frame guys a-frame yeah i mean these things didn't look like they were five foot long and three foot across but they were little a-frames that had little air conditioners with them uh, tons of places to stay right and so um you know it's and it's something we might consider when we go back down there so it is a it's a really nice area to stay in study butte b-u-t-t-e -E. yeah um and uh and i really enjoyed that area where we stayed yeah now our our campsite the coyote crossing itself was really nice rob the camp host had a really cool story um about how he got there i think tony you you talked to him uh right off the bat and asked him about the uh when you pull in there's a canoe yeah that he's got above his shed that he lives yeah. in in his house and you asked him about that yeah yeah that was a crazy story he's actually from uh kansas city and 20 years ago he got tired of the kansas city life you know and so he he just packed up all of his stuff one day and decided he was gonna go 
put his canoe in the Mississippi River. So he went across, I guess, across Missouri, put in the Miss Mississippi River, floated all the way down to the Gulf, and then he paddled across the, the coastline up uh, the Rio Grande River and up there to Terlingua. And then, uh, you know, they he got to talking to some of the people there and he, they, they figured out what he had done and they put him to work as a, a river guide. And yeah, there I remember he him is. saying, nobody told me that somebody would pay you to paddle a canoe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He said that I yeah. thought that was the greatest, greatest job ever. Yeah. And uh, so, he ended up settling down and buying a piece of land there. And he said he bought that piece of land because it actually had cell phone service. Yeah. Uh, the cell phone service down there is crazy. And yeah. the time, the time is crazy because you're right on central and mountain time. Yeah. And so half of our phones said central time and half of us said mountain time. We had no idea what time it was. Right. We had to go look in our cars, you know, for a, a clock that didn't change and actually see what time it was. Um, and they told us that you have to set it to that time, set it to central time. And then turn your auto, um, auto turn the auto off. off. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And that's that's what you got to do. So that's a tip and a trick. We're yeah. gonna have more of that on the next show. Um, but you know, that evening we had two long days of driving, and we just decided to chill at camp. Uh, you got the drone out. We we set everything up. It was a great time to just chill, and um, the weather was just outrageous, perfect that yeah. first day. Yeah. Uh, first and second day. Um, there was no wind, uh, no clouds. The stars were just unreal. And um, we just sat there around the um, the propane fire pit. And yeah. every now and then you would turn it off just to turn yeah. on the light. And we would we would put our little put our hand, goggles on. hand binoculars on. And we yeah. would look up at the stars and it was just you could you, you could actually see the Milky Way. Yeah. That's the first place I've ever been where you can actually see the Milky Way. Same here. We Same all here. saw it's falling amazing. stars. Um, it was just an incredible, peaceful night. It was exactly what we had hoped for. Yep. So that was it. That was the, the prep and getting down there. Uh, we wanted to make sure that everything was perfect. We wanted to make sure everything that was, was running good um was in tip-top shape it was a long way he's going to be putting a lot of miles on and all of our gear was in tip-top shape we had more food than we could eat in six weeks and you know we get down there we relax um cook a good dinner and we all just went to bed happy i mean hey, we was, did it was awesome we did yep it was exactly what we had hoped for it you know, was it sure was and um, we're going to wrap it up for this week, but next week uh, we're going to bring in um, a, a lot more information, a lot more photos of where we went um, and try to incorporate those and try to let you see exactly where we went and have some recommendations of places that you can go. We're going to have tips and tricks about, uh, about going down there, some things to remember when overlanding in South Texas and more, more from the bro fester and friends and bats next week yep so same bat time same bat channel that's right buddy that's yep. right buddy we'll be back on next week but hey look at there look oh, who's there's with Rob. us look who's with us our rob, camp host appreciate you being here um rob is the camp host where we were at at coyote crossing which we highly recommend and uh, Rob, we thank you for being here. You caught us on the tail end of the show. Um, but you can also always go back to Facebook and YouTube and check it out and watch it. We yeah. appreciate everybody joining Come back in. next week. Come back next week, Rob. Come we're going to talk about week. it some more. We're going to have a whole lot more, I yep. promise you. Uh, but we're kind of out of, out, of, out of time, and we knew that we were going to have a lot to talk about on this trip. But we're so excited that everybody was here. I want to encourage everybody. Get out there and live the best life while you can. Watch out for number one and don't step in number two. Everybody have a great week.
Thank you for watching. Professor. 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 Professor and friends. Joey the professor and friends. Professor and friends. Professor and friends. The professor and friends. Professor and friends. Professor and professor and friends. Sponsored by Artemis Overland Hardware in Springfield, Missouri. More Expo, April 8th through the 10th, 2022. Big Iron Overland Rally, first weekend in June of next year. U.S. Action Tracks, Blue Cell Coffee Roasters, Linson Solar, Howling Moon Tents and Awnings, and our good friends at Long Creek Overland. Thank you for joining us. We'll 